Okay, we're here for day two with the One Percent Film Festival, and we just have this short uh, film to go through, and we're here with a team from Four Bows and Cratchit. And if we can go from left to right, just introduce yourselves and say you're involved in the film. Hi, my name is Kamal Yudrim, I'm the director and cinematographer. Uh, my name is Alexander Staunton Hill, I'm the writer and one of the actors involved in the film. Hi, I'm Peter Silly, and I'm the producer and actor in this film. Okay, so that's off then. How did the project come to be? Well, these guys gave me two weeks' notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start off by saying that. Go on, Alex, you start. Oh, really? You want to you go for me? Okay, cool. <laughs> um, Mr. Tilly over here uh, decided to uh, come to me with uh, the idea that he wanted to do a horror film. Um, so I went through a couple of ideas um, until we kind of settled on going down more a teen horror route. Um, which is all, is all good, you know, it's very 80s and all that sort of stuff, but we want to kind of put a modern twist on it and make sure that there was some, uh, you know, likeable characters that you just didn't want, you know, immediately killed off. Um, but really, it's all this guy's fault, to be perfectly honest. <coughs> yeah, I always get blamed on This was my fault, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of just wanted to make a horror film around the teen genre. I've always loved that. Uh, in video games and movies as well. Kind of just wanted us to put our own spin on it, really. Um, I just thought Alex came up with such a fantastic script. Um, we had a deadline to meet. We wanted to get into a specific festival. So, yeah, it was very, very, very quick production on this. Um, definitely handed a lot of work to you on a plate, didn't I? Mm, yeah, an awful lot. But I think, uh, yeah, like Kamal said, he was like the last person to be uh, added to the, to the roster of... <laughs> <laughs> of uh, just very, very talented people. So, but yeah, you, you absolutely smashed it. What were the influences for the mythology of the film? I've got, that's another Alex question, because there was about <laughs> 15 pages of mythology that we couldn't work into the film, because that, that's the way Alex's brain works. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I could try and lie my way out of this one, but honestly, no idea. Um, I mean, most, most of it comes from sort of, I don't know, like we, myself and Peter, we played a game called The Quarry. So we kind of looked at how that took the 80s theme, spun it on its head a little bit. Um, but we wanted sort of a, a villain that could sort of keep within the 80s that people would consider quite, you know, generic, and then sort of try and flip it on its head a little bit. So I suppose when it came to like mythology, that was sort of where it started. Um, but yeah, there was, there was an awful lot um, involved in it that we just couldn't put in because, yeah, unfortunately, I, 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 I tried pushing it a bit, you know, further. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole the whole production was shot in two days. So we had a very tight window of when we could get it done because the location was all in because the whole of that location was all in. All encompassing in one area, yeah. um, and it was very expensive on the production and these, you know, what, what these guys were spending on it. So we know that we had to shoot it really quickly. So we, we kind of had to condense a lot of Alex's ideas because the original script was 45 pages long. Um, so we, we knew we had to make changes on yeah. set because we knew that we couldn't film it all in the same day. I'm fast, but I'm not that yeah. fast. Not actually, <laughs> that much material. So we knew we had to chop it down. So I think it suffered a little bit because of that. Because yeah. there was a lot of mythology that was really great stuff that we just didn't have the budget at the time to do it. But overall, I think, you know, it, really this film is the spirit of independent film. We, we came together. We had this crazy idea that we were going to make a longest short film that we possibly could in two days. And, and we tried our best to kind of tell that story. And like Alex said, make likeable yeah. characters that you didn't necessarily want to die. So we, we wanted to concentrate on that little bit of build-up of the characters before we then started to slowly try and kill them all off. Obviously, it was shot in the Wibble. How difficult was that? Did you have any, um, any problems during shooting? So? Well, you would have thought that we would have had none because we shot it in August. Uh, so we thought, oh, yeah, you know, perfect month. But it was torrential rain for the whole of the two and a half day that we shot. So a lot of what you can see there, you, you've got the production assistant just over the camera holding the biggest umbrella we could find um, with generators out in the middle of nowhere in the night time getting wet. And, get, you know, and anyone that makes films knows how it that's not really a good mix. So we, we had a lot of a lot of issues. We were in mud up to our knees. You know, it, it, it really was a troublesome production. Um, quite, 
quite surprised that we actually got a 26 minute film out of it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a miracle, yeah. really. <laughs> it's a miracle, yeah. <laughs> Did that cause you to make any changes to the story as it was going through? Yeah, th there, was, there was a fair few changes. Yeah, we butchered um, the script, basically. <laughs> well, we, we, didn't, we didn't butcher it. We just, you know, mixed it up a little bit. Um, I mean, we had uh, a couple of scenes that were more expanded on, as opposed to just, like, straight up cut out. Um, and to be fair, the, all those scenes were more, you have to get going more into the mythology of the film. Um, so in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't needed because the focus was the characters. So I think it was, it was the last scene, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the last yeah. scene. Yeah, the action scenes at the end, you had to massively chop down because Alex had like this running 20 minute action scene where, <laughs> where they're all battling through the forest and stuff like that, which we had to condense down to kind of segments and fractions right. to, to be able to tell a, you know, a story quick enough to be able to get it shot. Yeah. So really we were running out of time. So we did have to chop a lot of that, mostly at the end, but we also yeah. did chop out a lot of the expanded mythology and the explanation as to who this ghost is and, and all that kind of stuff. So we just, sort of just condensed it down. I mean, a lot of it came down to the um, uh, the generators, actually. Like Those were like the, um, the, the biggest issues we had. We had the first <coughs> one, which basically blew up. So that wasn't very fun. And the second one, which we hired, um, the the rain was diluting the fuel. So it went from something like four, five hours worth of fuel down to an hour. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was a prob problematic shoot. And except the forecast, obviously you never trust the yeah. you know, British forecast weather. Um, it, it said it was going to be sunny. <coughs> and but it just turned out to be, um, when I say torrential rain, I mean yeah. torrential rain. Yeah. <laughs> Not ideal, obviously. Not yeah. ideal, no. no. But you know, you get through it. It's indie film, there's always yeah. clock, you know, there's always something that's going to go. It's all to work around as well. Yeah, of course. Well, we had a lot of issues on the set. Was there any, uh, any positives to come out of filming this? Yeah, no, yeah, putting that aside, there was a lot of positives. Um, I mean, one we always speak about was just the fantastic team we had on board. Because of those challenges, we really got through it together. It was like demanding hours, weather conditions with the generator breaking down. There was a lot to it. We was in the middle of a farm site, you know, and yeah, we just pulled together as a team. Even the actors, went out, you know, to be doing crew duties really to help on that. That was really nice how we all came together. Yeah, it's definitely, it was definitely, like I said, the spirit of the independent film. Mm -hmm. was, we all knew that we were in a sticky situation, that the weather weren't on our side and we had a very tight ske uh, you know, schedule. So we all kind of pulled together and everybody did stuff that they don't <coughs> usually do on a film set. So all the actors were carrying generators <laughs> and, and all sorts. So we all pulled together and we all just tried to make the best film we could in that situation. And I think, you know, it's testament to, I mean, these guys are independent. I'm an older <laughs> filmmaker. I've been around for a bit longer. But these guys are, the, you know, the next generation of filmmakers. And, you know, that, that tenacity to get the film done yeah. and really shine through from, from these young people. So, you know, very proud of them. Obviously, you kept the film going quite a lot. Is there any plans to make an extended version of this one to uh, take it further, filling the gaps? Yeah, we do want to make a sequel. We, it, I, I mean, realistically, his head is not... Uh, He's not capable of doing a short one. He really has to make features. So we, there is a feature script that we've developed, and it's, as I talk, it's a lot better, and it's a lot more expanded, and the universe is bigger. Yeah. And there's a lot more kills and uh, you know interesting kills and, and all sorts of stuff going around. So, yeah. But the main thing with it is that it, it wouldn't it wouldn't take away from the short. No. Because the one thing that we, you know, we we work really hard on the short, so we don't want to just sort of put this feature out that is near enough an identical or just extended version, you know? Mm. We, we want something different yeah. so that that short can still stand on its own two feet. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, yeah. And is there anything else you guys are working on at all at the moment? What, me personally? <laughs> all three of you going down the line. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I've just, uh, we, we're showing the first hour tonight, mm -hmm. and I obviously shot that, I shot, I shot that. And I'm working on the Falcon production, the next one in cinema possible as well, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm working with these guys on the feature for, for Foreboding, which is really exciting. I've got another three shorts that I'm shooting this year, so I'm really busy this year, so I'm packed out. Yeah. I'm working with yourself as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the obvious one, the feature for the Foreboding with uh, the boys, <laughs> bringing them back. 
Um, I have actually got um, uh, a meeting tomorrow uh, for a feature film, a micro uh, budget feature, which is actually uh, really cool. Um, I forgot what it's called. I've, already, have I told you what, I've told you what it's called, haven't I? You've got a better <laughs> memory than I do. Yeah, I can't remember. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, so we've got, uh, well, not uh, we, I've got that sort of uh, going on as well as a couple of uh, scripts just doing whatever they're doing. Yeah, he's quite, quite prolific. He's got about four or five scripts that I'm playing with and they're great. <laughs> you are prolific. <laughs> what, what's that? I've become like their film dad. <laughs> film papa. Film papa, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I've just wrapped recently on a film called Love Lies, which is like a comedy horror. It's quite an interesting dynamic. There's only one male character in it, which I play, and then a female character. Um, they go on a date. Um, but yeah, it's very, very interesting. Can't say no more than that, but it'll probably hit early 2025. It's come out January next year. Excellent. And any questions for the audience there at all? Hands up. Hands up here. Uh, Alex Stanton here. Um, I was just wondering, um, so as a writer um, and also an actor, how did you find, uh, you know, not having your co-actors interpret your words the wrong way, or I imagine you didn't want to get any guy writing? Um, well, to be fair, we're quite lucky in that regard. When we're doing auditions, um, when we had um, Olivia and Eve and Sienna all come in, they made the characters their own. And that's sort of what I would look for. I would want someone who's, you know, doing exactly how I want the character to, like, look. Because then at that point, I'm, it's just me, you know? As a writer, I'm putting a bit of me into that. I want someone else. I want, I want some real. Um, so really, it, it wasn't that difficult. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it was just as simple as that. We got really lucky with the cast and yeah, I mean they're, they're all absolutely fantastic. So yeah, all right. thank you very much. Any other questions out there? It's all very quiet, very quiet. Um, what was your favourite moment of the shoot, all of you? <laughs> uh, favourite moment. Um, well, I mean that point in a film where you just go, oh, that went really. No, I thought that was going to be a problem. For, for me, the, the, first night, the first night shoot that we had, um, <coughs> where the generator packed up in the middle of the forest and we were in pitch black for what seemed like 20 minutes while these guys were running around like headless chickens trying to sort the generator out. Um, it was a quite a, obviously a bad moment. We thought, we're going to have to wrap production that night. And then one of our actors went, well, I'm a scout. I can, do, I can build the biggest fire for you. So she built the biggest campfire you could imagine. And we use that to pretty much light the whole set. So that to me just showed that that spirit of independent filmmaking that I talk about a lot. That in that dark period where we were like, oh my God, I don't think we're gonna get to get anything shot tonight. One of the one of the crew just kind of said, well, we can do this and everyone just mustered together and we all kind of got a really good result out of it. And, it, and in some respects it kind of turned out in our favor because it added a little bit more atmosphere because I would have probably went overboard lighting it. And that added a little bit more extra element to it. And I think, you know, brought us together. It kind of, it gelled us together. And we kind of knew that if we could get through that, we could get through anything else. Yeah. I, th I think the, uh, my favorite moment is literally, well, there's a scene very close to the beginning where um, uh, Peter has to hit his foot and say some random word. Um, Bippity. Bippity, that's the one. Um, and it was, um, Olivia's reaction, um, I, was it the take that we used? Yeah, that was yeah. the take, yeah, yeah. Um, That literally had us all on bits, and any time I think back to the film, that's sort of the first thing that comes to my mind, mm -hmm. just because I, I thought it was really, really, really funny. But that was like, you know, at the start of the shoot when things weren't packing up and we didn't have torrential rain, so, but yeah, it good was one. still raining, but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I just really enjoyed filming the campfire scenes, especially. It was just, you know, we was in the actual woodlands and filming it obviously late at night. And it was just, 
it was like you was actually going camping with your friends, you know, everyone on that team, we was all really close and got along really well. It was just the atmosphere, it was incredible. Um, took a while to split the campfire out, definitely. Yeah, went into early yeah. We had to end up pissing on the campfire to put it out, it was so <laughs> strong. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was definitely a moment. So we had a, yeah, pretty crazy three days on that shoot. Yeah, we, we actually had um, Nico, who was the um, AD. At that point, General basically, group, yeah. Hero, yeah. yeah just an absolute ninja. Yeah. Um, was like monitoring the, the, the fire the next day because it just it would not Stop. die. It Ignited was so annoying. It, yeah. it really was. It was yeah. just, yeah. I mean, you know, as a ginger, I can relate. You know, it's, you've yeah. got to keep going, but. We had no more piss us in us by that rate, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and a question from me. If someone wants to get into filmmaking, what advice would you give them? Give up. <laughs> uh, surround yourself with a positive team that really believe in your journey. Mm. Um, and don't take no for an answer because you will come up, come up against a lot of people that are naysayers when it comes to making films. And it, it, is, it can be quite a lonely place making films, especially if you're such a small team. Mm. So surround yourself with like-minded like people, you know, the people that I work with, Fausty, these guys, they're just really supportive. We all support each other. Find a network of people that really support you and also yourself be supportive of other filmmakers. So as a community of filmmakers, we're a lot stronger than just essentially a single, yeah. a single entity. So to make a film, all you have to really do is put that energy out there. And I know it sounds a bit, you know, a bit wanky, but, but put the energy out there and people will kind of reciprocate. If you put out positivity, positivity will come back to you. That's what I feel. So just really go with it. Excellent. Alex? Um, I would suggest not taking any advice from me, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Um, no, I, I suppose it is, it is just tenacity. You know, you have an idea, run with it. Um, that, that's basically all I can really say. That's, that's sort of how I ap approach it. If you have an idea, run with it. and. You will end up finding someone who, you know, will be very, very like-minded, and you will get a really, really good project out of it. Just, you know, got to keep heart in it, really. Yeah. Yeah, I just think you, you've got to definitely have dedication in this business. You can't just expect it to be handed to you on a plate. Um, you've got to have that dedication. It's a, a big factor. Um, as the guy said, surround yourself with like-minded people. That's very important. And just network. Put yourself out there because if you can connect well and show what you bring to the table that really can make the right connections to help get your film made. Like I met Kamal on another film shoot, Tales from a Great War. We became good friends. And obviously that really helped to get you on board uh, for this film. We, we got it made. So yeah, that's important. Excellent. Any further questions at all from the audience? No? Well, thank you. Thanks for all your foreboding pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.